1995 um, from Sophia University working on ana analysis of chaotic dynamics in neural networks. Since 2004, um, TUD 2012, he became a team leader in Lichen Brain Science Institute. And he was appointed as a uh, full professor in a Kai. And then now he is a, a, like a full professor in a Okinawa Institute of Science Technology. I think uh, John is uh, one of the pioneers working on the, the question how a robot constructs the higher order representation um, via interaction you know, uh, with the, uh, the environment, like sensory stimuli. And one of the, I think, uh, this group result is like compositionality in uh, neural networks constrained with like some special temporal uh, properties in a neural network. And also he quite interested in like phenomenology and consciousness, these kind of topics. I think that is kind of best fit for um, our consciousness stuff. So um, we are looking for uh, listening to his talk. Okay, well, let's welcome John and <laughs> listen to the talk. Yeah, thank you very much for the... Uh, is it on? Can, uh, can you hear me? Uh, for broadcasting. So oh, broadcasting. Okay, so then, 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 okay, okay. So yeah, yeah, thank you very much for your very kind uh, uh, introduction to me. And actually, this is the second time, right? So I, I did uh, maybe two years ago. I <laughs> came here. If you you are not here, but it's, uh, right? Do. So you remember? <laughs> you invited me. So at that time, I talked a lot about consciousness and those things. But uh, today, I like to talk a little bit uh, recent development, especially the uh, pre-recording active influence and related to the free energy things. But uh, what does it mean in the cognitive processing, especially embodied cognition, and uh, using robotic experiments? So uh, I prepare a lot, but it's, uh, you know, the time is limited. So as much as, uh, so today I try to go as much as possible. So then, so can I some please stop whatever time <laughs> so you start, people start to get bored, so. Okay, so then the, ah, okay, so then the, yeah, in uh, recently, but actually three years ago, I wrote a book in Oxford, and uh, uh, yeah, it's something about robot things and uh, thinking it in a dynamic systems way. So if you are interested in my talk today, so and, uh, please look at a little bit, so, okay. So then the, yeah, today's talk is uh, quite uh, about uh, predicting the active influence, and uh, so, then maybe people who don't know so much about pre-recording, but the pre-recording is for the, mainly for the perception. So that is, uh, it started from Helmholtz's way of thinking, and then also Raoul Barad is famous, and recently, of course, many people know that uh, Freeston makes this framework very famous, combining it to the more mathematically generic framework of the uh, uh, free energy minimization, and the other people are very much uh, the working on that one. So, and then, then that is the idea is actually is minimizing the error. So between a top-down sensory prediction and its bottom-up outcome by optimizing its internal state. So, so that is so that is not like just a sensory coming and the mapping to the output, rather than we have a kind of top-down prior, so that's the top-down and the bottom-up thing, and they have to be kind of arbitrary, then actually the internal state is changed. That is the later I will explain, the posterior changes. So then, then recognition goes, so. And then active inference is uh, for the action generation, is, uh, it's a relatively recent one, but it's uh, uh, Freestone and other people are these days discussing. So that is more for the kind of actions. That is uh, minimizing the prediction error by changing the sensory by uh, adequately acting on the environment. So, so that is, uh, so these two things, are, I, I think that is not completely separated things, but it's kind of somehow com should be combined. That because, you know, in the, in not act the environment, you, you have to, Anyway, so, so perceive the world. So then that, that's two things are ongoing. So, and then, so maybe, so, you know, think about how it goes, something like that. So that maybe we think about uh, maybe hierarchical organization of the network like this one, the higher level, maybe operated much slow time constant, and the peripheral, this exteroception, that is more for like a vision. And this is a perception, so it's uh, something more related to the own movement. And uh, maybe we have a something like, a, so then 
first play recording is more for the perception. So let's consider about the visual process. So we have some kind of a top-down kind of image about what that's the prior or intention or belief, whatever. So then we have a starting from a higher level to top-down process we have and anticipating so visual sensation and the reality you're gonna have. So that is a real one comes and then if you have some kind of the error, so the error is going to propagate. The, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a way of propagating, could be many way of implementation, but anyway, so it's going to propagating, and then, and then, then this error has to be minimized. So, so for that reason, so for that purpose, is kind of the updating the internal states of the older, lower level to higher level, some kind of internal states are updated. So that is what we call the posterior update. We start from the prior, then, uh, you got the real outcome and using the error and the, in the direction of minimizing the error and the internal states or posterior is updated. So then if it converges, so some kind of, is kind of perception can be, is done. So, and also at the same time, so you, you can learn, so, it, so for the minimizing the error, so I, it's not the only, so in case of the learning, we're gonna update both the internal states as well as synaptic weights in the direction of minimizing the error. <coughs> so, then let's consider about active inference, but is combined with the predict coding. So that is, so we have a prior intention again. Then we have a, maybe so, we have a kind of the acting, the intention of acting toward the environment. Then we have a kind of expectation about what kind of sensory reality comes back, the both exteroception and the proprioception. Then, so we have some kind of a controller here. So then, so in a, you have a kind of a, so this is the proprioception is, a, for example, if you think about a robot, so it's kind of a target joint angle at each time. So, so then, but that is still, you know, kind of a proprioception, kind of a posture thing. So your expectation of a posture, how it's changing in time. But uh, then we need a controller in order to generate real motor or torque. So, so that is PID controller or whatever. So then it's gonna be the, the <coughs> so, so that, that the proprioception is a pro expectation of proprioception is something like next time steps, the joint angle go like this one. This one, this one like that. Then, but uh, this one is a realization of the motor. So, so the PID controller or inverse motor, or whatever. The anyway, important thing is that here in this case, active inference case is that we have to act on, act on the environment. Then you got the real uh, exteroception vision because you moving something, pushing something, and visual sensation change. Also, you have a real proprioception coming back. So that is a, and that some kind of a difference exists here. Both the visual vision and uh, proprioception. That one is again going to propagating back and then probably changing the intention in the direction of minimizing these error. So the active inference, so that is, a, this is a, but actually, I, 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 I would say that uh, I have been thinking a relatively long time in this kind of framework, and uh, actually, uh, Friston kindly wrote that uh, his famous paper of the bioreactor climatics, and uh, this one, uh, 2009-11, so, and uh, he wrote uh, uh, action understanding the active inference, and uh, so he kindly wrote that, uh, so this idea in the article can be regarded as a generic Bayesian perspective on the connectionist scheme introduced by Tani, Tani, Tani. So actually, <laughs> but, but actually what I learned is, uh, but uh, until very recently, I, I was not so familiar with active inference. But uh, then some reviewer uh, teach me very much. That actually, I found this paper, and I now I understand, oh, what I'm doing, those <laughs> here was uh, something very much related to active, but I never use a terminology of active inference, but something analog, but not the same. But uh, I would say, but uh, Freestyle is very great because he makes a framework you know, more generic, especially in a Bayesian framework. But uh, I was, uh, I know only the more deterministic dynamical system. So therefore I couldn't think in that way. 
So the, actually, I read this paper and others. I'm very much in, uh, impressed by his way of uh, thinking. So, <coughs> okay. So anyway, <laughs> so then, then, uh, uh, so as I told you, I used to work on more deterministic recurrent neural network. Deterministic dimension. Everything for me is that the deterministic thing is the most important. But uh, first of all, those things that changed my way of thinking. So then and we decided to think and, and develop some kind of new type of recurrent neural network. That is a, a prediction coding ba uh, inspired variational recurrent neural network. So this entry published in, uh, uh, in uh, New York Computation. So, but the uh, so motivation is that uh, because I was so right wing deterministic dynamics guy, right? So, but on the other side, there is, uh, of course, a uh, probabilistic, uh, Bayesian types of people, so, and then long time I ignore that one, so. But however, if you think about it, if we have a fluctuate spatial temporal pattern, right? Then one way is that, uh, yeah, as I said that, uh, so we're gonna model it by the time it's cast because so you can embed whatever observation or probabilistic one into the determined chaos. So that is uh, possible. And also, so that is uh, through the kind of, you know, symbolic dynamics and uh, uh, Markov partitioning through the, yeah, that, that's, I don't talk in so much detail, but anyway, that is possible. And the other one is reconstruct it into the, of course, some kind of a coarse finding is kind of a, yeah. And then probabilistic finite state machine-like representation. Or maybe it's so these dates. Oh, I don't know why it's, uh, yeah. Okay, so anyway, so then it might be the stochastic Langevin equation that is a, the a dynamic system and but the noise added. So this kind of things. So, and then, then, but uh, there are two groups. The one is modeling by the time scale, so the other is something like done by this. And then I'm quite interested in what is between these things. So that is uh, uh, starts to think, uh, the motivation to develop uh, something called this uh, uh, new model, the recurrent network model. So then the, uh, this is predicting inspired variational based recurrent network is uh, Something. That is, uh, we are using, but uh, it's a, uh, uh, this is a lower band, so that is something like a, uh, semi, uh, the same as the free energy, but uh, that uh, what we want to, uh, that this is kind of cost function. The network have to minimizing the construction error, that is a kind of accuracy. We, we want to make accuracy, so this is kind of, you know, because basically predicting network. We want to make accuracy of prediction uh, as much as possible, but at the same time, so we're gonna have a kind of a care divergence between posterior and the prior, so that kind of latent variable. So latent variable of a, uh, uh, of a uh, prior before evidence comes, the evidence is something like next time, before next time step uh, sensation comes, so then that is a prior we have, so kind of expectation. Then you got the real sensation observation comes, then that is going to be, is uh, we can determine now more kind of evidenced by the observation. So then the internal state is going to change. So then what this is saying is that this prior and the posterior have to be somehow care divide. That is these two have to be something similar. So. So that is uh, uh, this estimated posterior and the prior is going to be the uh, care divide and becomes quite similar. That's kind of pressure we have. So, and then so, but uh, we consider like uh, putting this kind of weightening of this part. So more emphasizing this and uh, uh, this one is going to be is minimized or it's, we are allowing not so much minimizing. But actually that's uh, related to the how much we allow the complexity. Complexity of the network, complexity, or more, more I would say that more nonlinearity is allowing 
or more like a straight linear like things. So that is kind of ca you, you can choose. So the actually the way of choosing this one then the way of the learning, way of the acting and the recognizing going to be very different. So that is a uh, today's main things to I like to discuss with you. So. So we call this W weightening as we call metaplier. So the network looks like this. So, so we have a, so that is, this is something like a uh, latent state and we have maybe something like hierarchy. Higher level is much slower operated, and the lower level is much faster operated. So, and then, but a latent variable by each, each level we have uh, something representing by the mean and the variance. So mean and the estimated variance, estimated the mean and estimated variance, so, and something like that. So then, so, uh, and then this is something like, uh, then it goes a time step on next one. Now this is kind of current step, is time developed, and then next time step, the latent state variable, is a random variable is a kind of estimated, predicted, but at the same time, this one is going to provide some information for the lower level. And the lower level is going to be generating estimation with next latent variable, but using same level information of previous step, but as well as a higher level. So, so this is actually top-down flow of the prior going. So, and the going, then it's the lowest level is going to generate actual prediction, anticipation of a sensation is coming. So then we got, got a kind of a real one is coming. Then we got some kind of the error. Error is going to propagate. Then uh, try to change it. So updating. So now this is something like a posterior, so updating in the direction of the maximizing the lower bound. At the next time step, then based on this one, so you're gonna have a next prediction things you have. So then again, you got the error, and the error is going to propagate, and this one is going to update it. So, so something like, a, yes, time step goes like this. Uh, okay, so, so this is a way of doing, so some, something like, a, so, that's kind of the process is a top-down prior goals, and then at the same time, if you got a real sensation, that's the observation, evidence comes, and, the, and the you have the error, error is propagating and changing the internal state, so that and the variable, so. So that is a basic process. So, uh, okay, so. Uh, this is an uh, actual way of uh, things. And the important thing is that, uh, so uh, we have, after that training done, then the process goes like, uh, so this is current now, right? So then, uh, and then this is uh, for the future prediction. So, and then, so, and then, but uh, it, uh, here is only top-down things because we don't have any reality. So thinking about the future predicting, but uh, this part is uh, uh, kind of uh, the past, about the past, and we have always error is uh, computing and top-down bottom-up interaction for the updating internal state. So then this is might be called post-diction, and this is for the prediction. So therefore important thing is going to be Past thing, past in interpretation of past is always changing because the new information comes. So that is uh, quite important. And uh, compared to the conventional variational recurrent network, <laughs> like uh, VRN in uh, developer Bengio, but uh, those model is not caring about that part so much. So it's, it's the past is once confirmed, it doesn't change. But uh, I think uh, this one, but that comparison later, I'm gonna do it. So, but this one is always thinking about the future and also deflecting the past always for making the lower bound, maximizing lower bound. So then the using this network, so we did some kind of simple experiment, like, uh, so we asked the human subject to 
making some kind of a transition, but the kind of analog space. That is, so first, some, some subject is kind of drawing XY pattern, you know, doing like this one. So that is the first doing like this one. Then goes to figure eight of this one, maybe three times or something. Then back to the, this one. Then go to this one, 70 percentage. Then go to the triangle of this one, 30 percentage. Then back to here. So we ask the subject to learn, remember these uh, rules, probabilistic switching things. And then, but uh, in the branching point, we tell the subject, so now please go to this way or this way, because we are kind of counting. So then uh, the making this probability is almost OK. So in that way, we made a kind of a teaching data, so training data set. So that is kind of a yeah, probabilistic uh, switching uh, transition, but it uh, should be analog space. So because uh, I'm a robotist, so a robot, robot is always doing with analog signal, so it has to be something like that, so, so like, like this one. So the network is uh, have to learn to reconstruct this kind of things by using that, uh, uh, this uh, technique. So, like uh, we take, took our 400 steps and the 60 sequence were generated for that uh, training data, right? Then PVRN was trained with a different value of W. So then, so now we are coming to the, we train the network using this kind of data set, but uh, changing the, that W. So that is a uh, uh, important part. So then, this is a regeneration of the trained target sequence pattern for network trained with different W. So this is a target. Then you see like a, a B, A, B, A, B, A, C, A, B, A, C. So this is actually following this uh, uh, probabilistic finite state machine. But please look at that. For example, this is B here, and the B is quite different. A here and A is quite different. I, I mean, in terms of a speed or amplitude, it's quite fluctuated. But if we ask a subject to draw it, actually it goes in that way. So, so then this is something like uh, so using this kind of data. But we use this uh, 12, 20 different sequence pattern like this one and the train the network. And this one is one of the targets to be trained. So this is a reconstructed one. So network is try to reconstruct this one so using W equal 1.0. So that is a very strong constraint to, to the KL divergence part. So then what we see is that uh, after this one, uh, uh, the construction, so that is after the training and the providing the, the same initial states, then it's developed exactly the same until this part. So network is really learning exactly like this one, including very, very detailed things. But after this part, it starts to different. But uh, if you put the W in a, in a much smaller one, so, and then, uh, okay, so then actually, that is, uh, and uh, then what we found is that the deterministic, this one, this network is kind of learning this kind of a sequence in terms of a deterministic dynamics by adapting variance as almost zero. So that you, I explained that the latent variable is represented by the both uh, mean expectation of the mean and the sigma and the variance, and the variance goes to zero means that the, or it's going to be modeling it, the data by the deterministic dynamic system. So, and if you put W equals 0 0.5, Sorry. Sorry. yes. So the, I think I missed the, the red and the blue, they are just two degrees of freedom? Yeah, 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 so yes. So that, that, that controls, so it's yeah. like, okay, not okay. Yeah, so the target is this one. Okay. We have to compare one this one. One yeah. is not the, one is, No, 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 no. This is X one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Blue and red. Yeah. So, but uh, you see that this one, this one, until here is exactly same. Because yeah, the right? total are different. 
Yeah. And that's why I was like, okay, we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, sorry, so yeah. yeah. But this is tight. So then, if you're making the W a little bit lax, it goes to until this line is okay, but then, so you see that it's kind of a, uh, emit, uh, in a kind of, it's kind of a, it's, uh, it starts to break down. I mean, uh, you start to have an error here. So, and making a much larger W, uh, a smaller W, and it's gonna be, yeah, it's much shorter and shorter. So, then, so maybe people think that, uh, okay, so this network is the best to learn this example, right? But actually not in that way. So, uh, and also, yeah, this is almost like a random. So, but uh, yeah, we come back to this one. So, actually, uh, best reconstruction is actually come to this one. So that is a, because, uh, so this is something like a, a prediction. So then we did a kind of test. The test is we have to check that uh, how much network can predict future by using unround trained data. But unround trained data, but uh, something similar characteristic, right? So same subject draw it, but it's a data it was not used. And the network is going to be receiving this sequential input, uh, sequential input, then predict uh, after here. So, predicting, so, so, so it, it's kind of data is provided. So, then, then network have to do predict future from here. So, then what we found is that the W equal 1.0 is not so good. So this prediction, something goes wrong. It's kind of saying same thing, repeating, right? So then the best one actually comes to this one. So that is W equals 0 0.25. So that is something like, a, is a, if you look at the na uh, name of the primitive, B, A, B, A, C, A, B, this is kind of predicting B, A, B, A, C, A, B. So something like, a, so this is kind of representative, but uh, uh, and uh, if you take a statistics, actually, that's uh, W equals 0 0.25 is much better than this one. But also, if you take W is much smaller, it's gonna be, again, it's not good. So that is more random, it's becoming more random. So, and then best generalization looks like coming to this middle. So that is something like a W equals 0 0.25, so that's something called one step prediction to, pre yeah, it's somehow, but anyway, uh, is that uh, this one is coming to the very good. So, so that is uh, uh, one thing, that is one thing that we found. So the thing is that, uh, so we have a, uh, in a W1, so we have W1. Okay, so, and this one W. So if you put too, too, too much constraints to the large value, so making large value, so making the KL divergence, so minimizing too much, then it's going to be the, uh, the, the data used for trained one is well reconstructed. However, it cannot be generalized. So that is something very strong top-down prior and uh, high precision. Because why we say high precision? That is because the variance is almost zero. So that is a, uh, kind of strong beliefs. Network have very strong beliefs. That is, it should go in that way, right? No probability. And then this one is saying like a very weak top down, then, then relatively large variance. Quite a, uh, predict, estimating the next latent variable with relatively quite a large uh, variance. That means that it is almost saying that I don't know, right? Because uh, uh, if the variance is very large, means that what I'm predicting with this mean, the yeah, mean might be this one, but it could be very different. So it means that uh, no precision, right? So, but the uh, point is that uh, using same data, then use it, and then interpretation of data could be different. One could be embedded into the W scales. Actually, we found that if you're making the W very large, 
the, the network generates the apnoic exponent as a positive. So that is actually kind of a chaos jargon, but uh, actually is uh, uh, yeah, in the showing that the I mean, chaos generates. And if you're making the W the smaller, smaller, and then it goes to the more, more noisy and stochastic diamond term. But the very best generalization coming to between this one. So and then why do I care about this kind of things? Because if we have a very lot of the data, huge data like a deep learning people using huge data, right? Then in that case, we don't need to worry about the W so much you will be anyway generalized because you have so many data. But a robot training, we don't have so much data. We have to be careful. Otherwise, that is actually overfitting problem. So we have to put the uh, Ws a little bit smaller. That is actually, we're gonna introduce more entropy, right, randomness. That is, that, so what I'm saying is very, it should be intuitive, right? So that is kind of a saying, we're gonna allow in more randomness, high temperature rather than low temperature thing. But those things are discussed quite in a, like a simulated annealing of a Hopfer network or those static pattern learning case, Hopfer network, those things. But the recurrent network, such kind of things are not so much discussed. So, so then interesting thing is that uh, uh, if we case of the, the more larger W, then it's going to be the prior is going to be very much, as I told the variance becomes very small. The prior goes like this one. Then posterior is, because prior is very, you know, sigma is very small, variance is small. So therefore, posterior comes to more close to prior. That is a top down is dominating. So therefore, system is kind of uh, egocentric. System doesn't change his mind so much. But the other way around this one is that if the prior becomes a larger variance, the posterior goes close to the sensation. So that is, we are more following sensation. So I don't know so much, but uh, if you say so, I will follow you, something like that. So that kind of dynamics develop. So then the other thing is that maybe we might say that uh, so this one case is that kind of more low to learning because it's not generalized and overfitting. And, uh, and uh, this is a kind of a weak top down and low precision and the more toward random process. So, so that maybe, so that, that today I don't discuss so much, but there's uh, yeah, many people these days talking about uh, uh, ASD is something like related to the generalization era. That is a kind of a high high precision and a strong top of fly era. That's why. So it's kind of not generalized. So that uh, uh, these days many people are talking. So then we can model something like that kind of things by uh, this model probably. So then, so let's. Uh, I'm gonna dis discuss a little bit about uh, the VRNN. So, and the PVR difference by, so we do some kind of performance experiment using some kind of robotic setup, simple robotic setup of imitation learning. So, that is, this is the case of the PVRN. So, then this is something, this robot is dri driven, controlled by the, this PVRN network. And this is actually predicting uh, uh, next uh, uh, proprioception joint angle things. And also, it's going to be receiving, looking at this guy. So this guy is kind of demonstrator. So, and then try to predict how this guy is moving. So that, uh, basically, this network is trained for the, with a four different movement pattern. Okay, four different movement pattern, right? Like this, doing like this one, or do like this one, or maybe something like this one, something like that. So first, the network is trained, okay? So, and then, then, then the, the training data come from this one. So this one is uh, driven by the human. So there is something like a manipulator and the robot do many, you know, dancing things. And they're using such data, so the robot, this uh, network is trained. So, and the four different movement patterns. So then what he has to do is that after the learning, 
and uh, when he start like this one, then this robot have to kind of imitate with the synchronization, with predicting how it changes. If I he wanna do like this one, oh, then he understand uh, now this is this pattern of what I have run, right? But the point is that suddenly this guy change from to this one something without saying anything. Then robot this network have to understand because you are prediction that error now. So then error is propagating and changing the latent variable. So in that way, oh now it's switched to this one or something. So 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 that is something like a testing. So that, you know, we did with the PVRN. And then this one is a VRN. So and proposed by the Chung and the Bengals group. So this one is a difference is that uh, you, can, you can see. So it is something like a, so, uh, okay. So it has, it's basically sensory entrainment. Current latent state is, is uh, kind of recognized by the entrainment. So kind of sensory input is coming, that's kind of entrained, this D, this is determines variable, and this one is a, a random variable. That is entrained. So, so therefore, it's not this one. It's not there is no optimization process you know, during the uh, perception. But uh, this one is always we do using error signal and uh, doing like uh, many epochs of minimizing, try to adapting this variable. But that is, of course, it costs a lot of things. But uh, I believe that uh, the co uh, cognition in that way, so it's there is no free lunch. We have to do this kind of thing. So then we compare. So, so then, then, yeah. Okay, so then the, maybe let's look at the video. Yeah. Um, on the previous slide, you had uh, SP and Q, like on the. Uh, SP and Q, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, so, yeah, that's the important part, so better to explain. So, so this one, <coughs> right? Or even when you had the comparison, because I think VRN, ERNN only have SP, while your network has SP and Q, no? Yeah, yeah, so that, that is a, a VRN case is that a, is a learning time there is posterior, but there is a, uh, in a real time, in a prediction time, it's, it's uh, only using prior network, generative model. So, okay, so let's look at this one, so. So sensor input is coming, so then, uh, yeah. So, but, but uh, I'm not sure, but, uh, Shall we say this is prior or not? But uh, anyway, it's quite a different way of, uh, it's almost like the idea is autoencoder. Autoencoder is input is coming, and the latent space state is kind of the mapped by the input to the uh, latent space, right? So in that way, but that will have to be extended in the time domain. Then input is somehow kind of mapped to the latent representation, so, but is there is no, nothing to do with kind of minimizing a uh, maximum lower bound, such kind of optimization is not done. In the, at least in the uh, real time operation, but the learning time, of course they, they do. They have, they have posterior prior and the same equation. So uh, minimize and uh, KL divergence have to be minimized, accuracy have to be increased, same equation. 
describe each time step in your network you replace uh, the green node with ST with the approximate uh, distribution Q. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is uh, has to be somehow wants to make a minimizing, but how much is going to be minimized depends on W. Oh. So I will show you later the, yeah, how it goes more, more like this. So then the, uh, okay, so then then uh, what we showing that this is kind of a one step prediction, two step prediction things, and uh, yeah, it's a PVR and much better in a prediction and uh, because the error is small, prediction error is small. So then let's look at some video, We're comparing. So this is something like a target. They have to, both have to, so, but he's not so good, right, so for example, this time. Initially, starting time is not good. So, it, so because entrainment takes a, naturally it takes a lot of time. But is a error regulation is a using error is kind of positively changing internal state. So that's a, a difference. Okay. So then I'm going to discuss the, uh, the what is the underlying mechanism, the difference between uh, setting large W and setting small W. So, so that's a little bit tricky. And, and uh, so the thing is that when we set the W larger, anyway, network wants to minimize this part. So this is especially, in this, I'm talking about the learning time, learning case. And then this error has to be minimized. So then <coughs> this is posterior things. It's going to be the, it goes to more and more variance becomes small. Because if the variance is larger, it's going to be going to be a, have more error. So if we, so we want something like this body, this x sign three going to be the equal to x three bar. But uh, you can manipulate this value posterior in that way that minimizing the error. So then that is something like this one. Y you, you come. So, so if we posterior takes this value, it's going to be, error is going to be minimized. Okay? So, but uh, in the case of the large W, posterior and the prior is much constrained. It has to be becomes very close. So then, prior goes to write this one. So, but it's very hard to find a nice flyer, so it's going to be the, the equal, almost equal to this one. And it goes to the so same thing. Here is another value. It's coming like then, then posterior is estimated like this one. So then prior have to be quite close to this one. So that is a, before this evidence coming, the prior is predicted like this one equal to posterior, okay? Then this one is going to be, so again, this kind of thing. So this is a case of the larger W. So, okay, okay, I'm sorry, this is something mistake. more, not the construction error. In case of the learning, is no. So, but uh, then this is going to be the more deterministic. So that is the prior dynamics is a very small variance. So then, but in case of the small w, what they do is, again, in case of the learning, this kind of a sequence of the, is a more very much fluctuated patterns coming, then again, yeah, it goes to the posterior, goes like this one. <coughs> but because it's not required to so much equal, so the KL divergence is not required so much. Therefore, prior just maybe go to the, like uh, this is a unit Gaussian, but it's not, all, but uh, yeah, but it, I'm uh, exaggerated, but in the, the very small W case, 
it's kind of it's not constrained at all so then it can go to the this one it is okay but as long as the error is minimized in case of the learning so so this is a difference this is something what it is saying that is prior is saying I don't know what is coming it's just saying it's gonna be the random so therefore I say B is half and large variance that is uh, one way of interpreting the data. So I, I'm a little bit confused because you always go this way. So ah, you, go always this way. you always start with the posterior, and then you say, OK, if my W is large, then I have to make the prior similar to the posterior. <coughs> but that's, that's Yeah, but uh, ac actually, no, 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 no. Uh, actually, the posterior and the prior is changed toward simultaneously. So it's not the prior is fixed, but the prior also changes always. Because posterior changes, so posterior change, it, because posterior changes, then that, that actually, if the posterior changes, then actually prior also, it's, a, it's coming to here and then prior gonna change. But the point is that the prior and the posterior is going to be the quite similar value. But that means that the, it's, it's determined, it goes to determinist recurrent network, usual recurrent network. Then, but if we're asking this error has to be minimized very much, then that just go to the overfitting. Yeah, I, I understand this, this part, I understand that if you have large W, that they have to be similar. Yeah. If, if it's smaller, then they, maybe you have more field. But, so, is this, so we, because you, you say now, then everything that's happening there is kind of some optimization that the robot is doing about what it believes about its past. Yes, yeah, yeah, but I'm sorry. So please, uh, this one, I, I'm kind of mixed up with the online prediction and the learning process. But this figure is more for the online, uh, no, learning. So then please ignore this one. Okay, okay so it's, uh, it's just continue uh, like 100 steps for this one. So learning case, I'm talking about learning case. So it, it, because it means, so, so at every time step, you are co-adapting the prior and the posterior. Yes, prior, pri uh, yeah, yes. Pri every step we have to adapt the prior and the posterior, and at the same time, synaptic weight have to be optimized. So <coughs> then, but, uh, so but three. yeah, three, yeah. So, but but it's, uh, I don't know, it's, yeah, yeah, three, so. Uh, but the uh, important thing is that, uh, so this is something like, uh, you know, so deterministic dynamic systems, you want to determine the initial state, future is completely determined, right? So, but that is not so elastic. I mean, I like to talk, like, like uh, steel. Steel things is kind of a, you know, it's uh, no way to absorbing the noise. But uh, if we allow here, KL divergence is not necessarily the same, but some constraint, then that is kind of allowing elasticity, right? Do you understand? The term, dynamic system is like a steel. I'm a mechanical engineer, so therefore that way of understanding is very good, <laughs> but maybe you are computational, this is then, uh, or, but it's kind of steel-like things, right? Very solid. There's no abs abs uh, 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 absorbent, uh, 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 yeah, yeah. But it, this one is kind of, you can leak, leaky things. So if you have some kind of stress, you can leak out the stress. But this is, there's no way to, to stress release it. So that's the difference. So that one is, Christon is saying, uh, pressure. Pressure is more precise, is that uh, is no leak. But uh, more, no, less precise means that uh, I, I don't care, I'm okay, what is wrong. So that is more kind of a yeah, larger variant. But that's kind of a second order, that is second order. Precision is second order, or maybe belief. That is second order things. So first order is exact value, right? But that's about how much you 
precisely you are estimating that kind of understanding net r is going to get. Right? So, but th that is, uh, I mean, first on consider, right? <laughs> so, but I extend this into the more in the timeline because first on never work on uh, uh, learning part, so, and not so much about temporal things, so therefore, yeah, because I used to work on recurrent networks, so then I extended this kind of thing. But uh, this one is quite important for the, my robotic business. Robot sense is that the data is really fluctuated. So if we teach like a reaching something like this one and grasping, I'm gonna teach the robot many times by changing the position, but each time it's not exactly the same, right? It's, it's really <coughs> dirty. Sometimes I'm my movement, teaching movement is uh, faster than the other time. So time expanded, sometimes time compressed, then we need this kind of thing, this kind of a uh, leaky, le leaky uh, spring or something. So pr provide elasticity, right? So that is, uh, uh, I understand, it's a very mechanical engineering way, I understand. So, so I have been thinking that this kind of mechanism should be necessary like more than 10 years, but I could not formulate it mathematically. Then, but when I look at the Freestone's linear immunization thing, oh, this is the thing. So. <laughs> okay. So then the, uh, we're gonna do some kind of uh, experiments like a two robot imitative interaction, like this is a Nadine, and uh, my PhD student, me, and recently working, but not yet the paper. So, but that kind of, a, then the idea is something like a, if we have a, like a, so, I said that uh, one is a possibility that one agent could be the very strong flyer, but the other agent might be the very weak flyer. So then if these two are intact, what will happen? So, uh, again, I don't know why this comes. <laughs> so, so, but anyway, so this is showing like a, this guy learning about a pre pattern, then B and C. So then, then he, he learned this kind of primitive sequence moving and the, the, the dancing like this one. But this guy is C, B, A, the, the other way around. So then if they are kind of try to imitate each other, what will happen? But is that their knowledge, the learned pattern is different, contradiction comes. So, so then the, uh, okay. So I'm sorry, this is something like a, uh, in a, okay, uh, how can I say? Oh, okay, so this is a strong agent, it's a strong flyer. This is a weak flyer guy, right? And then this is something like a, now is here. Okay, maybe we're gonna show a little bit more. Uh, do you see that? Uh, So this is current perception. This is a prediction for future. But the weak agent, his prediction is always changing. Right? Now is here. So, but this guy, strong agent, his thinking about the future <laughs> is almost same. So then, if you look at this one, this guy is always his thinking, his past things is changed by <laughs> following this one. So it's, uh, uh, do you see it, right? So that is, in case of a two robot interacting, is uh, the guy with a strong will or prior or intention is dominating the other, so. So that is, uh, when I saw the, like I w used to work on a mirror neuron things, but a mirror neuron is always saying that, uh, so if I, if I observe somebody doing like this one, that I'm going to do the same thing. But uh, I think I'm not always in that way. I'm not always imitating. Sometimes I'm gonna show what I want to do, right? So, so therefore, mirror neuron is a case of the maybe, maybe very weak prior, weak top down, more adapt to the other things, but not always.
So then, the, then what I'm saying is that uh, maybe human tends to, so then I want the robot a human interaction. Sometimes robot is driving, uh, I myself is driving the robot, robot have to follow me. So that is, uh, I now have a very strong prior, but uh, this guy may be weaker prior. So that is kind of, a, so then sometimes change. So robot is now driving human. It's a long, very strong prior, and the, the human can, is the kind. So that kind of thing, how we can do something like this? That is something like a, uh, right, and a turn taking things, right? So sometimes uh, I I'm uh, dominating the other. Sometimes the other uh, the other guy is dominating me, or something like that. So that is a turn taking. So then 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 we thought about changing the metaplier W after learning. What I talked previously is that the uh, metaplier is changed already in the time of the learning. So then, uh, the ones trained as a strong prior guy is always strong prior guy. But the ones trained with a weaker guy is always weak. But uh, that is not uh, so good. I mean, <laughs> so uh, we, we sometimes become more dominating other but sometimes is that uh, we're gonna may adapt hearing the other person very much. But maybe some people are always <laughs> egocentric. Uh, yeah, yeah. But um, we have to be better to be adaptive, right? So, so then that is uh, then. So I worked with a uh, uh, student, my student Wataru, and uh, just we submitted the, uh, two days ago the paper. So new one. So that is something like a synchronous imitation by PBN using a pixel level vision. And then that is something like, a, yeah, as I talked about. So we have a visual, visual teacher and a proprioception. And then, and then more realistic, I mean, they're using a vi real vision things. So, and uh, we're gonna use an error signal and the back propagating, then, then so. So that's kind of imitation setting and um, Okay, so then the, we, the, the training data looks like this one. So that, uh, and then uh, we ask the human to generating training data. So then that is, uh, we ask the human again, something like a following finite state machine, like this one. This is A pattern, this is B pattern, this is a C pattern. So then you want to do the A, then 50% you're gonna do the B, 50% gonna do the C. So that kind of things again, something similar. And uh, this is something like a, an, uh, an, a proprioception, the joint angle in a posture change, joint angle things, but uh, kind of only showing a four dimension. But this one is something like a vision, but this is actually the vision network, some kind of a feature, feature value, reduce the feature value is go like this one. But the first, so we can see that uh, it's more fluctuated with the vision than proprioception, right? So this is proprioception part is much smooth as you expect. But the vision case is that uh, we have surface reflection rates different or light condition, many things, and uh, it's really in a uh, fluctuate, quite fluctuate. So then, the, 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 but the first thing that what we found is that uh, is uh, because vision pathway is more fluctuated and then more randomness is here. So therefore, what we have to do is that uh, we have to make the network more elastic in the vision pathway. That is making less W. So, and, and then, but uh, uh, the proprioception part is kind of more smooth, less randomness, therefore you can make the W larger. So that is some sort of kind of a design technique, but uh, so many people talk about uh, uh, integration, association, or different modality of sensation, but uh, that is, have to be, we have to always think about how much we can get the information from the data. So the information, so that is sometimes it's more noisy, sometimes not so much noisy. So that is, uh, then the network is learning and characteristics have to be changed, like uh, uh, more, and, uh, more and, uh, less W. So, or uh, larger w, less W means that uh, less complexity. So if you allow the more complexity in the network, more nonlinearity, it's gonna be overfit, so. That kind of thing we run through the experiment. So then, in, uh, re in uh, results of imitation performance, 
So that is uh, what we found is that uh, again, so this is but the uh, difference is that uh, the learning is done by some particular uh, W. So that is a meta flyer. And we found that the learning goes very well. Then we change the W in case in the time of the test imitation. So and then so in this case W is very small to the larger one. And then this is a reconstruction error and prediction error is W goes up and more error. And if you look at the KL divergence, that is obvious. If the, the W is small, KL divergence becomes large. The W is becoming larger, KL divergence is decreased. So maybe so looking at the example. So case of the W is very small. So this is, I'm showing very slowly. So that is, uh, 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 <coughs> I think I, I, I made a mistake the other way around, probably. Uh, just make sure that W5 is, ah, ah, okay, okay. okay. So W is very small. So then the actually, you see that the, this, uh, uh, for example, this uh, uh, posterior uh, red prior is blue. It's going to be very different the visual modality part. The perception also is not so exactly the same. And uh, this is associated layer, very top posterior prior is going to be not so much exactly the same. However, this uh, prediction part is relatively good compared to the uh, <coughs> so it, it, it's really I'm showing kind of slowly so this is a prediction but it, it goes uh, uh, better than the other case. So that is a posterior is sacrificed, but are then adapting to the sensation very much. So, but uh, please look at, so remember this kind of thing. So, but uh, the other case, W is very big, is the situation gonna be very different. You see the quite posterior prior is going to be very similar. It's go to very quite similar, and then also you see that uh, it's a uh, its future doesn't change so much. Its prediction of future it doesn't change so much. So it's but it's kind of this part of the prediction is not good so much. So prediction error is a lot of prediction error. So okay, so I'm gonna explain this by the. Okay, so that is a, uh, we have a, like a W1 small, this is now, okay? So then this is after something like a 30 steps, how it changed, so now it's now, it's now here. So this is uh, the window inside. So, and the W is very small case. So he's predicting like this way for future, but uh, then also, uh, this is a dotted one, is uh, observation. And then real line, solid line is a future prediction. So because this is now, the only we have here is a future prediction. And you see that the inside window is something like uh, this is, is a, uh, observation and uh, you are reconstructed output, that's interpretation. That is almost same. So. So in the W is small case. So then predicting in that way. So, but uh, in, in predicting this way, but uh, then 
you got the so so now observing a here is a and predicting that b is coming this is actually b pattern but the reality is that uh, you got the uh, c is now coming not b so you see that a after a it could be b or c but network this time is predicting uh, uh, b but the c comes actually she comes then it's adapting very well you know it's it's once it's predicted in that way but now inside the window is adapting to the c so now is the first prediction b but the prediction b changed to the post postdiction it's changed to the c then now is predicting the c so therefore what i like to say that uh, once predicted this way is quite drastically changing by reality of observation of the c he first predicted go this way but this one come so therefore post prediction is going to be changed so that's kind of adapting to the sensation in case of the w is very small but uh, and, uh, but in the case of the w is very large so now observing same a but uh, please look at it. it's kind of a, this dotted one, the real one, have more <laughs> error between. But anyway, so then now this guy is and predicting B is coming. Then, then, and uh, now reality is come. But uh, you see that uh, this real line, reality is actually she comes, this dotted one. But still predicting, saying that I'm observing B. This is uh, the constructed output is uh, B. But observation C, lot of uh, gap between. And predicting, just saying that C is continuing, right? So that is uh, this guy, this part of the prediction and uh, uh, post-prediction, it doesn't change, you know, almost same. Right? It's not adaptive. So this guy is uh, something egocentric, uh, the egocentric. So it doesn't change the mind. Once it decides, it goes in that way. So that kind of difference we have. So, but the underlying mechanism, so again, but uh, I, 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 this, I, I showed you some, uh, the, the previous one is that the W is changed in the time of the learning phase. But now this one is that the W is changed after the learning. So then property is gonna be different. So that is, so in case of the larger W, so that is after the learning, W is increased. And then what happened is that again, this guy is kind of try to minimizing, the posterior goes like this one. But the prior, the prior wants to be become something similar. But however, this variance once learned prior structure, can, precision structure cannot be changed so much. It has some kind of a uh, variance. So that is different from previous one. Previous mm -hmm. one is that because W is making large and learned, and the network structure <coughs> become very much deterministic. But this one is using W, an um, intermediate value of the W. So therefore, network is not uh, necessarily the prior dynamics is uh, deterministic. So therefore, some kind of uh, variance include. So therefore, this is not so, uh, 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 top down is not so strong uh, belief. Because it is saying that I'm going to change in this way, including some variance. However, still this network cannot adapt to the to the uh, uh, to the sensation. So it is uh, uh, then this is something related to the discussion of the free will. Free will could be deterministic dynamical system or a stochastic dynamics. Still, right? So. A, a noisy patab inside the brain. So it could be noisy patab. So, but anyway, whatever it's generated is kind of future 
anticipation by stochastic dynamics or deterministic dynamics, but uh, in, if you set W is larger, it won't adapt to the sensation. It goes in your way. In your way, but it still could be probabilistic. If you come to the same situation, it's going to be a different way of uh, generating own behavior, but uh, it's not adapt to the sensation. <laughs> so, but uh, the other one is like uh, setting the W is very small, it's gonna be, so then, uh, then in that case, prior is not uh, like uh, you need Gaussian, it's already round one, but uh, it's allowed to the kind of a different value, so therefore it goes like that one. So, so therefore, but uh, in this case is that uh, because this one is adapted, kind of not constrained from the prior one, so therefore error can be very much minimized here. In that way, the network is going to be easy to adapt to the change of the uh, sensation, dynamical change. So, so, and also, so, so in that way, so uh, after the learning, if you change the W, and you can be egocentric guy or more adaptive, so that is that you can you can change it, so. <coughs> okay, so now I, I think I, I now one thing that I can finish now. <laughs> and and uh, how much did I talk? It's already, yeah, I think I did too much, right? Yeah, okay, so I, I think I. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah. So, uh, my question about the adaptability of kind of W. Yeah. So, um, so you mentioned that uh, human uh, adaptably change the, mm. uh, the external thing and the, 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 the intention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in this model, uh, W is a hyperparameter. It's so given by experimental. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. Yes. Um, so do you have an uh, uh, idea to uh, yeah, of course, change the W? Of course we want to change the W. So mm -hmm. that is uh, in the next uh, goal of my uh, PhD student, Wataru. So we are discussing very much. So, but uh, it's, uh, uh, so then do I have to think about the meta prior dynamics? So that is one way. So that is, uh, so, is a uh, free energy things is kind of a, I think that is kind of go to the one level up, meta level up, that is a precision dynamics to come. Then, but uh, that precision dynamics structure can be changed by the meta prior, that is I called. Then we might set some kind of dynamics of the meta prior. Then meta prior can be changed, but is, uh, what kind of cost function is necessary? So. Because uh, it's all day what I'm doing, like a uh, prediction error minimization. Then adding that uh, entropy part so, or uh, complexity part is now is coming. Then we, why we might be able to add one more, maybe more and more and more. So it's kind of the study of the cognition goes to the meta and the meta and the meta. So then that is one thing we are thinking, but it's, we are not yet uh, formulated what kind of the next level of formulation, what kind of cost function is uh, uh, good. So that is we don't know. So, but uh, the other guy or other student saying, no, don't, we, we, we should not go to such kind of complex things, meta and meta and meta. No, just is a uh, 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 meta prior set same value, but uh, through the agent, like uh, that's Nadine is working in the ABC pattern, the CBA pattern. If there is a conflict between, then conflict cannot be settled down. So autonomously it goes sometimes this guy is uh, dominating, and then, this, and then sometimes other guy dominating. If we set some kind of a meta prior is kind of intermediate value, it automatically goes in that way. So that is maybe possible because of circular causality. So that is something like if I, something I act on the world, uh, other, then something kind of a difference is, uh, 
circular causality, you know, that, that the kind of a looping, and that's going to be introduced in stability a lot, and in that way, it could be the possible. So, but uh, maybe controlling metaplier is more designed way, and thinking about uh, metaplier dynamics, that might be possible, but maybe not so interesting. That is a, uh, uh, my laboratory and people are arguing very much, so I don't know which one is good, so. <laughs> Yeah, but is, uh, that is, uh, yes, we are setting metaplier, designer, now, uh, but first we're looking at the property of this one. So then now changing dynamically, or so that is the future direction. Okay. <coughs> so uh, I'm trying to get my head about around order network actually works, and about the error that you actually propagate. And I was wondering, do we say that with a high W, for example, the error is uh, propagated much more from the toward the slow part of the network, but if the W goes, goes down, it, it's much more, in a way, uh, react maybe reacting. So actually, the error is limited to propagate yeah, toward yeah, the, yeah. the yes. slow part. Yes, because if that W is very large, it's going to be the uh, yes error is strongly propagates. Yes, and the W is uh, small. It's kind of uh, first of all quite noisy, noisy noisy patterns inside, so therefore error is not straightly propagate. So we okay. done. Okay. Yeah, th that looks like, it. yeah, that's so uh, intuitively correct, I think. So it looks like it's not using the top of his brain in a way, like the, the, the thinking part. So the it's, uh, part is not used anymore. <coughs> so <laughs> it's, uh, if you the try, uh, is the W is small, it's going to be, yeah, you are correct. Maybe it's more reactive, because top-down prior becomes very weak. So therefore, adapt to the sensation means that uh, uh, quite uh, reactive, right? So, and uh, these days, uh, I, I think Sussex people, including you, so it's people talk about homeostasis things. Uh, the Sussex people are talking homeostasis for a long time, but uh, they are trying to the you know, free energy things and then adapting to the environment. So that is, I think, is more in a weak player weak prior. <coughs> so, but uh, it's kind of a uh, freestone and uh, Pezzuro is discussing hierarchical things. And the uh, first is that the uh, higher level is precision is weak, not so much strong top down. <coughs> but uh, as a lower level is developed, then gradually higher level starts to control it by having more precision. So not using metaprior terminology, but it's more mm -hmm strongly saying that. So that's later come. So that's the part possible development. That is the Pezuro Christon discussing. Yeah. 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 So if you have, um, so let's say you have one of your robots, and now I'm going to give you some uh, training set, and I don't tell you much about the training set. Mm. Do you think you can distinguish uh, high-dimensional chaos from low-dimensional stochasticity. So th that is a uh, quite difficult thing, right? So that <coughs> is, uh, uh, but are you saying that the high-dimensional chaos and the low, di no, is you saying that the low-dimensional chaos or high-dimensional chaos stochasticity? Um, so yeah. way. I, I'm thinking, so if you have low-dimensional chaos, for, for example, let's say three states, A, B, C, hmm. then, um, you know, we have a lot of techniques to reconstruct a, a factor mm -hmm. set. Mm -hmm. High dimensional, more problematic. Yeah. So I'm wondering if you just see the data, if you can distinguish really chaos from you know stochasticity, or if there are two possible interpretations for the same data. One that is you know now yeah, that, that is yes, and they are maybe equivalent. No. But uh, then is I'm saying that it's kind of a W is coming, oh. and then where the generalization comes. That is a so we, if you have the data, we should split in a half. One is used for the learning, other is for the testing. <coughs> and then by changing the W, which W is the best generalization? So then if the W comes a very large value and the still generalize, it's gonna be the, yeah, is a data might be more deterministic, we can say. But uh, that is uh, by hunch, so I may not be correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But uh, think that the number of the data is small, then you can fit it, right? So therefore, you can so if the data is small, so that if we have the infinite, yes, there should be the way to do, mm -hmm. right? But the point is that the data is infinite. So then, the, how, then what we can do is that the, try to find the best W so that half of the data can be most generalized that we find. That is the only thing that we can do it. But uh, still, probably we cannot say that this data is by determined scales or stochastic. Mm -hmm. But uh, without it, still system can work, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just thought, so have you uh, thought about uh, measuring W uh, in humans? Yeah, so that's a... Like, uh, So that, that's a schizophrenia. Yeah, but it could be a good leader. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that is, uh, but uh, yes, but a uh, strong prior is is a uh, Freestone's terminology. So that is uh, probably something to do with W. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yes. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so the human side, yes, of course. Yeah, not only robots. Yeah. Or maybe you can use robots and human, and then yeah, kind of. But uh, do you think that the leader type person is gonna be the sometime more schizophrenic? Uh, that's not the you know, prediction. From <laughs> yeah, prediction. So, uh, but but uh, like a Hitler like type. So then maybe in that way. But it's very good reader is actually you know hearing the bottom up things same time. Have a nice. I think a very good reader is actually arbitrating between two very nicely, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a good reader, so <laughs> then I gotta say so, so. You are a good reader, so <laughs> you know how to arbitrate. So your talk mostly uh, focused on the some prediction on for prediction for the some uh, time step or predictions. So I wonder so how this framework can be applied to some re um, re reinforcement learning or some, re some project behavior. So actually, you know, next slide was actually about this planning things, go direct planning, but uh, I didn't have time to talk about it. <laughs> and also is the currently one student, Donchi, is a kind of a, of course, is a Freestone talks about uh, free energy for reinforcement learning. That we are uh, you know, kind of developed a recurrent network for the reinforcement learning and uh, actually using the variance change in time. That is a kind of a, you know, reinforcement learning is putting the noise, right, in the motor. But what we're doing is kind of doing that, putting the noise into the, the, the latent variable. So then that kind of natural exploration. But how much strong noise, that is a sigma. So, but that's going to be estimation. Best sigma gonna be the different, depends on the state. So in that way, so we are uh, working on our reinforcement learning also. So, yes. But uh, you know, I cannot talk all those things. So. Yeah, I'm just wondering, like, can you explain this to you guys? I think this is like extremely interesting results. Okay, so the, let's do the 10 minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, but uh, if somebody is very busy, so you can <laughs> leave it. So, and then, yeah, this is actually, so now is uh, working a little bit together with Kanai-san for the future, FPGA. So, but, uh, so that is kind of, a, yeah, using the same framework of a predicting active inference to the goal direct planning things. The idea is that the so robot is kind of a currently looking, visually looking, the camera is in front of the robot. And then, so like, uh, the, and then showing that the goal is something like that. Then robot have to think about mentally image, how I can move block to this way and uh, different goal setting, like this one, how I can do it? So, mental imaging, and this one is going to be another goal state, how I can do it? So that kind of thing, that is the first we gonna goal direct planning is conducted after training using a set of uh, experience of the robot. So that is, a, we, this is based on the training, but that is a, a kind of the, uh, we, we grasp robot hand. And then, if you, you know, 
grasping this one and put on this one, how it looks like. So that is uh, many, many, you know, small sequence, right? So uh, how it's kind of, a, if I act on the block, the how block change. So that's kind of experience we choose that like 300 sequence. After that, we ask a robot for more complicated thing. So now I want to, this one, you want to realize, I want you to realize this one, how you can do that. That is kind of a learned memory experience consolidated the structure, so then robot might be able to imagine how to do it, right? So this is even the new experience for the robot, not the, the land one, but this position here, it might be the new to the robot, but still kind of imagine it. So that is a goal direct planning. So then, then that, okay. So I, uh, this skips, so then uh, go like planning by the variation for recording. So that is something like, a, okay. So this is kind of initial state, right? So then this is can predict for the future, but uh, this network is this part of the after the step one, it's not a random variable, it's deterministic, but the initial state of a random variable is a random variable. So that is a bit different. So then, then we're gonna, then network is actually predict. So therefore, then we're gonna say, this is different sensation then this has to be achieved. So that is something like a block is shown like this one. You have to achieve it, right? So, so then how I can I get this image in the some, some time of uh, end of the steps? So then robot have to imagine, then it's actually searching the, this, uh, and also we provide initial vision image, right? The initial one and the end one provided, and between you, we have to consider. So what kind of latent variable have to be go by changing the initial state, searching the initial state. So that is, so now the error is coming. So because the error is coming from the goal state, goal difference, but here we don't have any error because we are, now robot is here, right? Initially looking at a visual state of the current one, and this is a required one. The error propagating only through this way, and then, then optimizing this initial state so that this one error is minimized. And also, but this part is kind of a, you, you need a Gaussian prior, so then tail divergence between the unit Gaussian and this one also, yeah, kind of a same way we are computing. So, then motor program input, but uh, and a big difference from the previous forward model idea. Forward model idea is always something like, uh, if I act this way, how I'm gonna see the sensation? That is a forward model. So that is a mapping from the motor to the sensation. But uh, if you do it in that way, searching the motor space is really huge first dimensionality is very large, right? And also, so that, that's a very important part, but difficult to explain. It's a, this way of doing is something we people recently call niche construction. It's not learn or kind of not learning in, in a uh, uh, complete model of the environment. But if you use motor space, then you have to, uh, robot have to experience all whatever experience, motor, different way of the motor acting on the environment, how it goes, causality, it have to be learned all possible one. Otherwise, if you inference, so goal error minimization and the inference the, the motor sequence, you will come up with a fake plan. That we experienced many times. And, we, and we, we couldn't know, we didn't know how to solve it. So, but now, using latent space, and the training is done only for the habituated space. So therefore, space is fast, very much limited. For example, if you think about, you are grasping something, we usually do like this one, but we don't do like this one, right? 
But uh, the, uh, we don't need to, uh, to mentally simulate like this one. But the current forward model, conventional forward model, is force us to in that way. But uh, so therefore, my robot is kind of a teaching. I mean, I'm a supervisor, so and teaching robots what is the usual way of doing. So therefore, plan generation is based on that local experience or niche construction. So therefore, it's a uh, more tractable. So. So then, but uh, in uh, but it's a visual things. But uh, we, because we are using vision, and we have to solve another something some problem that is a visual attention. So uh, usually, you know, we are manipulating object. We are looking at something important thing. But uh, in uh, making the program, what to look at is uh, not so easy things, right? So therefore, if the network can learn to to get acquired develop function of the uh, automatically important part is uh, focused, attended. The also another thing that I thought is that the working memory, like a visual working memory, something, what you see here, something important you see, then maybe it kind of written into the visual working part, right, store it. So that kind of thing might be very useful, but uh, I don't know. What kind of thing has to be stored? I cannot design. But a network can self-develop such kind of a, a skill. Then that is the way of using working memory. So that is very good. So, but that part is actually, I'm inspired by a draw. <laughs> no, and a Google DeepMind. But uh, they, they don't do anything about uh, robotic things. And, uh, and development of visual attention mechanism. So that is. Uh, uh, learn where to attend without explicit teaching, development of uh, adequate user visual working memory, learning what to read, the write in the working memory without explicit teaching. So, and, uh, and then I, I might explain uh, first like uh, how it's top down visual attention, visual working memory goes. So like uh, first, so we have a visual input is coming, 64, 64, then so we're gonna have a peripheral that is kind of 32, 32 pixels of a pixel of a peripheral vision that is, uh, and uh, also centered vision 32, 32. But the point is that uh, where is the that kind of focused one, attended one? So that one is actually recurrent neural network decide. So like this one, top down visual attention is something like this one. So but that I will tell you how it's determined. So through the through the learning, then. We're gonna have a peripheral vision 32, 32, original 64, 64. So this is a very coarse. But uh, is, is using this one and using this attended one, 32, 32 pixel, and then you can, so then this is something like a prediction of a next time step things by current one. And predicting, so this one is kind of predicting how it's gonna be the center vision looks like, how peripheral. So then adding together, so the, the, the peripheral vision and the CV are merged, and the 64, 64, the prediction is coming. So then we're going to put some part of this one to the background memory. So that is something like uh, maybe this part is going to be masked and copied to here. This operation, where to mask? That is also new recurrent network decide. I don't decide. So some part of the important part which should be stored is going to be kind of a mask and then it's coming. So then also it's, it's going to be, uh, and then it's this working memory part is that the uh, image in the working memory can be preserved or erased. That one is also decided by the network. Then finally, this background memory part of some uh, masked part and uh, this part of the original image is kind of uh, put together to the here. So then we got prediction of 64, 64, uh, get, getting the previous step one to this one is coming. So 
the lot of the operation, but however, so that is uh, all these mechanisms can be self-developed by means of synaptic changes in the network with prediction error minimization. And that, because that is a whole network is differentiable. So then the whole network looks like this one. So that, uh, so this is something like I showed you the vision part, but uh, in, on the top of that, uh, we have LSTM, stack the LSTM, looks like very complicated, but everything differentiable. So then what is gonna do is something. So we are providing initial states, you remember, latent variable, then it's going to, uh, why is, so this part of the network is, Uh, this part is predicting uh, the peripheral vision 32, 32, the also proprioception that the joint arm movement. Then this is kind of a, this ventral pathway is going to predict the uh, and, uh, attended, atten attended part 32, 30. This one is the content is predicted. And with the attention vector, that is uh, where it is. It's around here or here or center or something <coughs> like that. And also scale how much you gonna attend sharply or broadly, something <coughs> like that one. So, and then, then that's all the things. So it's coming from here. And also mask operation, I have shown kind of a where to mask and bringing it to the working memory, something like that. That kind of mask operation, that one is also determined by the, this ventral pathway is coming. So, so then, but the thing is that uh, so intention provided initial state, and it's going to generate motor sequences as well as a vision prediction of 64 sequences. So that is, a, again, this is a predict coding thing. So this is a latent variable provided, and this is going to generate sequence of motor as well as a vision thing. So, so then after the learning, so I'm showing kind of a test, test of it, so, this is something like initial image. The robot is now asked, this is your goal. You have to uh, achieve this one. Then uh, what I'm showing is something like what kind of mental image robot generated. Now I'm showing this is not a real one. This is actually network generated. So now you see that the robot is achieving this goal, right? So this goal by mental imaging. So then, then uh, generating this, this process of mental image generation, what kind of the prediction, uh, the, what kind of uh, attention is made? So this is the attended one. So you, you remember like attended one, 30 to 32, but the vector is showing like the where to attend and the scale. So this one is coming. So actually it looks like uh, it's kind of whenever robot is moving object, And, uh, and uh, approaching to the objects, it's attended. So object is, uh, objects to grasp is attended. That is very naturally. So that is a network decides. And the very interesting part is background memory. What kind of the image comes here? Do you think it's interesting, right? So robot is not moving. But after object is moved, it's up here. So kind of this is something abstract information. So and, and then robot hand is gone. So that kind of result of the action, kind of sub goal is appeared here. But that is uh, we surprised, oh, this kind of representation comes naturally. So then uh, this is a real one after the image generated and ask robots to, to yeah, of course it's can, um, generated nicely. So then what the emergence, what do we see? This is something like a goal to be achieved. This is the initial state of the vision. And uh, this is a process of the how robot vision goes. So this is the motor part, okay? Then you see that sometimes object is occluded. Right? But the uh, visual working memory part, it's not occluded because you see that it doesn't change, right? But uh, when the object is moved, it changes. 
Object just is moves, it changes. So therefore, <laughs> robot is somehow understanding if you don't move green object, green object is here, even occluded. So that kind of a representation is naturally coming. And also, own behavior, own, own hand movement is kind of, it's not appearing. So, but only when change, so yeah, that is, uh, I think, interesting part. So point is that uh, one is that the concept of object constancy as a capture. So, and then, so the other is that a sensory attention, then another is that sensory attenuation for self-generated action was observed. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, something like a sensation on hand. The robot is not uh, representing, at least in the working memory, because you don't need it. Because self uh, sensation of uh, uh, originated from self-generated action, you can predict it. So that's why you don't need representation. So that's why it's going here. So, so that is something like a you know famous example by the Wolpert and the break <coughs> more like a, if you tickle by yourself, right? So you don't feel anything so much. But if somebody do it, so uh, you feel something, right? Because it's unpredictable. So, but it's a, so that is something like sensory attenuation for things. So that is something like I would like to say that at least this robot is getting starting to get uh, kind of a self body self and uh, object is different. So that's kind of representation coming. So how peripheral pre proprioception information into, into the network. That is a proprioception is kind of inferred. <coughs> right? Inferred so so that uh, it's uh, so it's not inputted, it's kind of inferred, but the latent space is inferred. Then that one is automatic. Okay, so I better to show you the network. So, so is that explicitly given or only visual information? Not explicitly given. So that is uh, so it's it's something like a latent space, and that's it's always predicting vision and perception, and the vision and the per perception. So that is based on the learning. For example, if I teach a robot to grasp something, right? So in a robot got and uh, learn about this sequence data of a both vision. So both is because my hand is moving. We can see the visual sensation every step. And also proprioception, you change in time. That is kind of trained. That's why robot can kind of anticipate if the, my hand go like this one. So that means that if my hand have to be here, then now your hand is here, how my perception should change can be inferred from the round experience. Mm. And its inference is 100% correct? Not always correct, Not but always. Uh, of course, generalization error. But if it's nicely generalized, it's going to be the inference of the, the, the perception should be, both of perception and vision should be OK. Is it the uh, uh, supervised learning or? This is supervised learning. Okay. Right. Supervised learning, many examples. Then something <coughs> through the generalization, so new situation to go, sometimes you can, uh, you know, you, if you generalize well, so you can achieve. Do, do you think this uh, system can solve meta learning Manipulation task where you, you know, the, the task, there are many different kinds of tasks, and then <coughs> the robot or AI has to learn to generalize from uh, a certain task to user. Task. So, that is uh, one thing that is uh, we are now thinking <laughs> is that the same network have to deal with navigation of the robot, the object manipulation, the human interaction. So that's three things, different domain, train the same network together, and what will happen. So th that is, uh, then in order to solve that one, kind of core cognitive primitive functionality have to be acquired. And th then that one might be adapted to the domain specific one. 
So that kind of things may happen, but uh, I don't know how many do different domains should be trained. Just three domains, is that enough? Maybe not enough. So then, but it's gonna be required as a lot of the works, right? So, but I have to go in that way. So something like general intelligence, yeah. Yeah, I think it's, uh, yeah, I have um, more, but it's, uh, I think it's uh, too much, so yeah, then, then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna maybe ask again. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm coming. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. So, so can I have questions now? Or? Okay. <laughs> Let's thank again. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. For, thank you very much. For the talk. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we have to leave till yeah, can I, as soon as possible. But <laughs> as soon as possible. In two weeks, uh, um, next speaker will be the Acer there. He's gonna talk about his theory about the uh, um, uh, consciousness. Huh. So yeah, please, uh, please come join. <laughs> it's gonna be very interesting. Yeah, great. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone, tonight. <laughs> so let's see you again. <laughs>